the name of God. Hello everybody, this is session 7 of your discourse analysis lesson. In this session, uh, I want to talk about chapter 3 of the book, which is about topic and the representation of discourse content. In this chapter, I want to talk about the relationship between topic and the discourse on content. Okay, uh, so as I told, in the course of this chapter, we shall examine some of the uses of the term topic in the study of discourse. Discourse fragments and the notion topic. The data studied in discourse analysis is always a fragment of the discourse and the discourse analysis always has to decide where the fragment begins and ends. There do exist way of identifying the boundaries of stretches of discourse which set one chunk of discourse off from the rest. Okay? There are some strategies to identifying the beginning and the end of the each, I mean, fragment. For example, formulaic, uh, formulaic expressions such as once upon a time or they lived happily ever after, this kind of expression can be used explicitly to mark the boundaries of fragment. However, speakers often do not provide such explicit guidelines to help the analysis, I mean, uh, the analysis to select chunks of discourse for study. So always, I mean, we do not use these kinds of expressions. Sometimes maybe we use them. So the discourse analysis, I mean, um, uh, should, I mean, to uh, should guess the beginning and the end of each fragment, okay? In order to divide up a lengthy recording of conversational data into chunks, which can be investigated in detail, the analysis is often forced to depend on intuitive notions about where one part of a conversation ends and another begins. So if we do not use these kinds of expression, as you see, the discourse analysis, I mean, um, forced to depend on the intuitive notion about where one part of the conversation ends and another begins. There are, of course, points where one speaker stops and another starts speaking. But every speaker change does not doesn't necessarily, I mean, terminate a particular coherent fragment of conversation. So there are some problems, uh, I mean, to decide about the beginning and the end of each fragment. F for example, sometimes we use a formulaic expression like those expression I told you uh, once upon a time, for example. But sometimes there are, I mean, there aren't such uh, expressions. So the, I mean, analysis should based on his intuition. And uh, sometimes based on the speakers, I mean, some, I mean, where one speaker stops and another start, for example, we can guess that this is the um, uh, end of the one part and the start of the other part. But sometimes there are some problems for this kind of decision. So decisions about the end of one chunks, chunks of conversation is typically made um, by appealing to an intuitive notion of topic. So for guessing, I mean the uh, beginning and the end of each chunk, we can, uh, I mean, uh, rely on the uh, term topic. Okay, so the topic can help us. I mean, to determine the beginning and the end of each chunk. So what is topic? So uh, I want to talk about the topic in this chapter. First, we have, uh, I mean, many expressions related to the topic. The first one is sentential topic, okay? One use of the term topic is associated with description of sentence structure. According to Hockett, a distinction can be made between the topic and the comment in a sentence. In a sentence, we have a topic and a comment, which is the comment is the explanation of that topic. Oh. So in that, the speaker announces a topic and then says something about it in English and in the familiar languages of Europe. To Europe. Topics are usually also subjects and the comments are predicates. For example, John ran away. You see here, this is a sentence, English sentence. We call this kind John topic, and this is the comment. I mean the 
explanation of that topic topic here is a subject and the comment is our predicate or the other one that new book by Thomas I haven't read yet this that new book by Thomas this is our I mean topic or our subject and this is our comment and our predicate which is the explanation of that I mean topic so this is a sentential topic okay different languages use different methods to mark the topic constituent of sentence however we are not for the moment concerned with the structure of linguistic units comparable to the simple sentence nor are we considering topic as a grammatical I mean constituent of any kind we are primarily interested in the general pre-theoretical notion of topic as what is being talked about so this is the definition of topic what is being talked about in a conversation this kind of topic is unlikely to be identifiable as one part of a sentence accordingly we agree with Morgan that it is not sentence that have topics but speakers so the speakers I mean decide the speaker decides to um, have a kind of topic in his or her conversation so it, it is not sentences that have topics but speakers I mean have topics so this is the sentence or sentential topic the other term is discourse topic not sentence topic discourse topic Kinnan and Schifflin emphasize that, that discourse topic is not a simple MP like the previous one for example look at this example John ran away this is the I mean single word this topic is a single word John but I mean uh, linguists believe that and the discourse analysis believe that uh, discourse topic is not a simple MP but a proposition we show this view by considering some experimental work in which the topic was treated as the equivalent of a title so the topic is like the title of the I mean uh, uh, the discourse okay the text so the topic is a kind of proposition like the title in a series of experiments uh, experiment subjects were presented with constructed text to read and later recall one time without topic and the other time with topic okay predictably the experiments show that comprehension and recall of this passage were significantly better when subject I mean the topic of the passage were provided okay so this kind of experiment show that when we know the topic of the I mean text we can I mean understand the sen the, to the text better okay so the use of the do word topic in this type of experiment suggests that the topic of a text is equivalent to the title and that for any text there is a single correct expression which is the topic of course uh, uh, which is the topic of course there is for any text a number of different ways of expressing the topic for example if I give you I mean a text and I ask you about the topic and the title maybe there are many I mean different titles and topics for that text each different way of expressing the topic will effectively represent a different judgment of what is being written about in a text so the difficulty of determining a single phrase or sentence as a topic of a piece of printed text is increased when fragment of conversation discourse are considered so when we consider a fragment just part of the discourse the det I mean the determining a single phrase or sentence as a title of that fragment is a difficult work okay so in this uh, part I want to talk about topic framework this is uh, I mean what is the definition of framework here and what is the topic framework here there is no such a thing as the one correct expression of the topic for any fragment of discourse as I told you I mean there are I mean there is okay no correct expression or no one just one expression of the topic for the fragment of discourse there are many I mean candidate for being the 
uh, I mean the title or the topic of any fragment. So uh, how can we decide to determine or to select one of these topics as the I mean correct topic? So this is depends on this topic framework. There will always be a set of possible expressions of the topic. The topic can only be one possible paraphrase of a sequence of utterances. What is required is a characterization of topic which would allow each of the possible expressions including titles to be considered correct, thus incorporating all reasonable judgments of what is being talked about. Okay? We should, I mean, decide about the text uh, with what is being talked about. I mean, in the text, we say in the text, we suggest that such a characterization can be developed in terms of a topic framework. So we call it topic framework. Those aspects of the context which are directly reflected in the text. Those, I mean, um, features which are related to the. Um, text and reflected in the text can help us to determine about the topic. So what is being talked about, I mean, in the text can help us to determine the topic of the text. So those aspects of the context which are directly inflected in the text and which need to be I mean, called upon to interpret the text, we shall refer to as activated features. So those features in the text which are related to the topic, we call them activated features of context and suggest that they constitute the contextual framework within which the topic is continue constitute. That is the topic framework. Okay? Uh, we have a kind of example in the book. You can look at it, Smoke the House. This is the title of a text. So aspects of the speaker's assumptions about his hearer's knowledge must also be considered in relation to the elements which the speaker does make explicit in his contribution. Any consideration of the topic involves asking why the speaker said what he said in, I mean, a particular discourse situation. So this is, uh, as I said, this is the topic framework and we should choose those activated features which are related to the topic in the text and based on those activated features we can I mean determine the topic the real topic of the text so this is the I mean topic framework so uh, certain elements which constrain the topic can be determined before this this course begins. These elements are parts of what in the previous chapter were described as the context of a speech event. In relating contextual features to a particular speech event, however, we are particularly interested in only those activated features of context pertaining to the fragment of discourse being studied. These features, I mean those activated features which I uh, told about them, these features, of course, derive from the physical context, for example, like the time, the place, the speaker, the hearer, the message, so, you know, they are external to the text. They are not, I mean, inside the text. They are external to the text. So we call them physical context. There is, for most conversational fragment, a set of discourse internal elements elements which are derived from the conversation prior to the particular fragment being studied. These elements are introduced in the preceding cortex and form part of what has been described as a domain of discourse. So we can conclude that for determining the topic of the sentence we should I mean determine the activated features. What is these features? These features are two kind of features. One is physical, I mean, uh, contextual features, like for example, here is speaker, time, place, and the other one is based on the cortex, I mean, the text itself, the previous sentences and the, I mean, the neighboring sentences. This is the cortex. So the determination, I mean, of the uh, for determining the topic, the real topic or real title of a text, or um, I mean, fragment of the text, we should, I mean, determine the activated uh, features, the contextual features and the cortex features. These two kind of features help us to determine the real title, 
and topic of the sentence of the excuse me text the other term I think the last one is the presupposition pools what is presupposition pools what we have described as a topic framework has much in common with Veneman's proposal that for a discourse there is a presupposition pool which contains information constituted from general knowledge so the I mean the presupposition pools consist of these knowledge general knowledge situative context of the discourse completed of the discourse I mean the cortex itself so we should have a kind of general knowledge about the world physical context we should consider physical context as I told you in the previous part and we should use I mean we should consider the cortex the part of the discourse itself so these three kind of I mean uh, factors uh, I mean can help us to determine the topic so we call them presupposition pools it's a like a pools okay we choose from these pools uh, I mean some factors to help us to determine the topic in this approach each participants in a discourse has a presupposition pools pool and his pool is added to as the discourse I mean the discourse proceeds each participant also behave as if there exists only one presupposition pool shared by all participants in the discourse so maybe there are I mean there are um, pre, I mean or there is uh, the same presupposition pool for both speaker and hearer so Veneman emphasizes that this is true in a normal honest discourse which we have uh, I mean um, we have the same presupposition pool I mean the hearer and the speaker so this is the presupposition pool presupposition pool I mean consists of three kind of information general knowledge cortex feature and contextual feature these three one I mean determine the presupposition pool and uh, the, I mean the discourse analysis and linguists believe that the hearer and the speaker has a I mean has the same presupposition uh, pool so they can understand each other based on that presupposition I mean pool uh, and uh, the last one is the relationship between this presupposition pool which I described to you and the uh, Uh, sentential topic what is the relationship between I mean the sentential topic and the presupposition pool according to the last definition the topic is what two participants are concentrating on it on in their conversational talk talk so there are two problems here first this definition of topic seems to be based on single term just it seems that there are uh, I mean there is just one single term for being a candidate for the I mean sentential topic but I but as I I mean told you there are many candidates for being the topic of the sentence or the text so there is there isn't I mean just one um, just one topic determining I mean um, uh, just one specific topic maybe there are many candidates for being a topic of the sentence or text and the second problem it is far from clear how we would decide what the participants are concentrating on so based on this definition which topic is what two participants are concentrating how can we determine what I mean uh, what um, uh, sentence and what um, uh, phrase the I mean the participant concentrate on it how can we determine okay Veneman suggests that topics can be referred to by means of individual names deictic expression definite expression for example look at this example Mary is singing strangely you see here the reader presumably can just as easily reconstruct an alternative context in which Mary would not be 
propose as the topic of the discourse if we look at this sentence uh, at first time maybe we i mean uh, guess that mary as the individual name can be the candidate of the topic but the writer can change this context and the situation which Mary wouldn't be proposed as the topic of the discourse. So it should be apparent that the use of single constructed sentence as the basis for making claim about notions such as the topic of a discourse is extremely misleading. So this shows that just by choosing one sentence, we cannot determine the topic. We should have many sentences, a text to determine the topics, for example, based on the previous sentences, based on the neighboring sentences, based on the contextual, I mean, features, based on the general knowledge, based on these, I mean, knowledge, we can determine the topic. And maybe uh, just there is not one single, I mean, a specific topic. Maybe there are many candidates for being a topic. And on that situation, we should, I mean, decide to um, the, to determine the specific topic of the text. So just based on one single sentence, we cannot, I mean, decide correctly to determine the subject of the sentence. We should have many sentences to choose the correct topic of the text. So that's enough for today in this, I mean, uh, session. I talk about the topic, the notion of topic, what is topic, and what is sentence topic, what is discourse topic, and what is topic framework, and then I talk about the pre presupposition pool, which consists of contextual features, cortex, I mean features, and the general knowledge, and at last I concluded that uh, we cannot determine just one single topic, so there are maybe, I mean, different kind of topics, um, I mean, the candidate for being a topic of the sentence, and just based on one sentence, we cannot determine the, I mean, topic, but uh, we should, I mean, decide according to many sentences and a text to, I mean, uh, determine the topic correctly. Okay, thank you for your attention. That's enough for today, and goodbye, everybody.